finisher, finishing. Just clinical in the box, huh? Yeah, clinical in the box. Uh, just instinctive, dynamic, sharp, aggressive. They're the kind of words I'll use for a, 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 a goal scorer. And Mark, what about for you, for, for goalkeepers? And it, it's maybe changed a bit over the years, but I'm not sure if, if it has. What are, the, what are the first things that spring to mind when you're thinking top-class goalkeeper? Warrior, resilient, fearless, um, can't be scared. Um, just got to give it 100, 110% every week. Um, you know, you're going to have your ups and downs, you know, a lot of downs, uh, then ups, but just got to stick with it, work hard, and uh, yeah, just got to forget about the rest, put the rest behind you, and just grind away, work hard because you're the last line of defense. You know, there's no one there helping you out. So, you know, you need to, yeah, you need to be quite fearless to, to be a keeper. That's super. And one of the things that's been really interesting and great across the, the three previous weeks is that um, all three of our previous guests have talked about that mental that mental side of the game, the psychological side of the game as being really important. It's maybe something that wasn't as focused on back in the past, but it, it's certainly something there and maybe a skill that some of these kids can start to start to think about, not just having, but how they, they develop. And we might touch on that um, as we go. So. Have you seen the game sort of evolving over the last little while? So when you started off as a, as a goalkeeper, Mark, I'm thinking it was probably very much around just stopping goals going in and then it started to maybe move towards a more more all-rounded um, kind of a game. Have you, have you noticed that? And wh what do you think the next, say, 10 to 15 years for some of these kids as they come through, how do you think goalkeeping will or won't evolve? Oh, it's evolved 100%, you know. Everyone thinks goalkeepers are, they're just there to stop the ball from going in the back of the net. But, you know, it's not the case. Uh, you know, these days, goalkeepers have to be good with their feet, left and right foot. Um, you know, uh, a lot of coaches, and Lloydie can vouch for me on this, um, you know, the start of the attack comes from the goalkeeper. Um, and if you're good with your feet, um, you know, you, you're going to have you're going to have a good career. Obviously, it's important. You know, goalkeeper is the main objective and the main priority is to stop balls from going in the back of the net. But you know, these days, um, you know, coaches are big on players uh, on goalkeepers playing with their feet, just like outfield players. So we're basically not a goalkeeper; we're an outfield player as well because we have to be good with our feet and. As you see, you know, the top goalkeepers around the world, um, you know, they're, they're fantastic shot stoppers, but good with their feet. They're proactive. You know, they want to be involved in the play. You know, you see a lot of goalkeepers, you know, playing high out of their goal, which another thing, you know, coaches are big on here in Australia and overseas. Um, you know, being like a, a, what do they call it? Like a, like a sweeper behind the back four, you know. Because a lot of teams these days they want to they want to press high up the field and you know in in doing that you need a goalkeeper that's proactive and willing to take risks that who's going to come off their line and help the back four and help the team out so yeah the game's definitely evolved and you know it's exciting times who knows what it's going to be like in another 10 to 15 years time how do you I guess, and, and you touched on it before, all the words you talked about when it comes to goalkeeper, they, they were mental strengths really. So you didn't say reflexes, you didn't say shot stopping, yeah. it was it, it was um, psychological things. How did you develop those? And then how do you um, kind of bring them out um, on a daily basis? Yeah, so obviously, um, yeah. Uh, so when I was overseas actually, um, Obviously, I played, you know, with Newcastle, and then made the move to Europe. Um, you know, signing a two-year deal with with, with Swansea in, in, in the Premier League. Um, and then after the first year, I was never going to play in the Premier League. I just come from Australia. I was 22 years of age. You know, it was a big step, and um, made the move to Holland, um, the Netherlands, and I was there for a season and a half. And 
that kind of shook me up a little bit. Um, you know, playing in Europe, you know, playing in front of 15, 20, 30,000, 40,000 people. Um, you know, it was quite tough. I'd never experienced that in my life. And, um, you know, I went through a really good phase at the club when I got there. The fans loved me. Um, you know, I couldn't do anything wrong. We played against one of the biggest clubs in Holland, final. We beat them in Rotterdam, 2 0. And then there was a phase there for about two months, two and a half months, where we didn't win a game. And, um, you know, it was quite challenging. It was quite hard. Um, you know, I got to the club, the fans absolutely loved me. But when the team wasn't doing well and you weren't having that, that, that success on the field, the fans were turning against you. And I didn't know how to cope with that, you know, because that was my first real experience playing at the highest level. Um, you know, I'll give you an example. You get a ball back from your teammate, your own fans would whistle at you because they didn't, the fans didn't feel comfortable with you being there. So that was really challenging. I didn't know how to cope with that, you know, because it was my first experience, you know, um, experiencing that. So that kind of shook me up a little bit. Um, and it took me a while to recover and uh, I found myself dropped from the team. Um, got dropped from the team and didn't get my spot back. Um, and it was quite hard, obviously, overseas, Lloydie can vouch for me on this as well. The fans are so passionate about their club. Definitely, and Mark can probably echo it coming from a keeper, if as a striker, if I can, if I can finish a goal or an opportunity first time, firstly it's going to be harder for the goalkeeper to save, I believe, and uh, two for defenders as well to try and stop you. If you try and have the extra one or two second or third touch, it gives a goalkeeper a better opportunity to get himself set, and then it makes gives, it easier for us. Yeah, exactly, and then it gives yeah. defenders, and it gives defenders time to to be able to try and sort of gamble where they can might be able to tackle you. So for me, when I was always in the box, it was always about trying to that snap instinct. That one touch finish, so just to to, to, to be clinical and uh, and score goals. So if you look at even if at the weekend, if you look at Man, uh, Mane's goal for Liverpool the other day, you know it was instant. I mean, ball by Arnold down the corner, straight away instant, just straight away. The goalkeeper can't save that. It's just he's, he's, it's, it's too quick for him. So that's how I played my game. It was all about sharpness and just trying to be as quick as I can in front of goal to score goals. And Mark. Um... When you played against strikers who you knew had that, so if you was playing against a Lloyd Lewis who you know, okay, if he gets the ball, he, he's shooting, does yeah. that change how you goal keep? Uh, yeah, it does. Obviously, um, you know, being a goalkeeper, one of the, and I learned over my career as well later on, you know, communication to your back four is so important. Your two central defenders, you know, I can't reiterate it enough that how important it is because they can help you at the end of the day. So, for example, you know, a striker cuts in on his right foot, you know, I'll be communicating to one of my defenders to block one side of the goal, don't commit, block one side of the goal and force the striker to shoot once on one side. So you can start anticipating and start going because the higher level you get to, you're not going to have a chance if you're just waiting there and waiting for the shot to react and then go. You know, you need to anticipate and communicating to your defenders is so important because they can help you at the end of the day so much. Um, probably, te probably technique, you know, especially goalkeepers these days. Um, you know, speaking from a from a goalkeeping point of view, um, you know everyone. You know, I'll go like I'll go watch some some young soccer games and that, and everyone's like all the young kids. They're scared, you know, to put the gloves on and, and, and jumping goals, you know, because they think, oh, you know, if I let a goal in, and uh, you know, the team's going to be angry with me. You know, the players aren't going to speak to me anymore. But just, you know, like I said, just go out there, put the gloves on, enjoy it. Um, you know. It's a big responsibility, but you know you can have so much fun along the way, and you know, and that's important as well. You know, you can train as much as you want, but you know, you need to enjoy it along the way as well. Because if you're not enjoying it, then you know, there's no point doing it. You know, have fun. You're out there with your mates, having a laugh, having a kick around. You know, obviously taking it serious as well. But 
you know that's one thing i've learned as well over my career is you know it's so important just to go out and, and have fun and, and, and enjoy what you do you know being around your mates you know doing what you love you know it's it, it, it it's so important um you know and i can't harp on about that enough just <coughs> play with a smile on your face be happy and yeah <laughs> that's, that's the only bit of advice i can give really is just to enjoy and have fun yeah, that's that's brilliant. What about from the physical point of view? Is it um, explosiveness to get yourself up to top corners, most important, or strong, you know, getting strength yes. in the arm? Or what, yeah, what? yeah, yeah, definitely. Obviously, um, you know, like I said, being a goalkeeper, you need to be powerful, you need to be strong, you need to be dominant. Um, you know, so you know, gym work. Um, you know, is so important. Uh, you know, little things like even yoga and, and Pilates and all that kind of stuff, you know, for flexibility, you know, because obviously being a goalkeeper, you know, you, you're getting your, your body, you're throwing your body in all different kind of positions. So you need to be flexible and, and agile. And, you know, that's one thing as well that I've, you know, over the past two, three years that I've started taking really seriously is, is yoga because, you know, I think it's so important for a goalkeeper, you know, having that flexibility and that, you know, all those movements and that, you know, because, you know, you, you're in those, you're doing those movements every day in training, in game. So, you know, you know, if you can be flexible, you know, it makes your job so much easier. Brilliant. Yeah, so for me, yeah, for me, so technical, like for, like I said before, getting that wall and just the ball against the wall, get someone up against you for being a striker, just being able to hold up the ball and having that technical ability to control it. Tactical, I would say, watch the top players, watch how they move in the box, watch how they come short, watch how they get in behind. You know, physical, I would say for me when I was going up, do that extra work, go and do some athletics, go and do some speed work, uh, get in the gym. Pump some weights. Not silly. Don't be. Don't be over silly. When going, trying to go too heavy. But explosiveness in the legs. Some gentle leg weights. And then on the psychological side of it, for me, I found I found very important. Rehearse things in your mind. So when you're going into a game, actually rehearse what you want out of that game. So mm -hmm. I, if you're a striker, rehearse how am I going to hold off a defender. Rehearse how am I going to make a channel a channel run. Rehearse when I'm in front of goal. Where am I going to put that ball? If you keep reversing that and putting that memory in your head. Come Jordan, pitch, it will happen. And again, for a goalkeeper, rehearse when the strikers are. Where am I going to say? Where can I think? We keep rehearsing your head. Just give yourself memory, memory, memory. And that was what I was brought up on. From my mentor Danny Bailey used to tell me that all the time. Just keep rehearsing in your head. And obviously, so I, uh, you could get a good get a good sleep because you need good sleep. You need good food in your body to, to get that concentration. Get water in you. Get hydrated. Make sure you're going to games hydrated, so your body feel your body feels calm and relaxed. So when you're playing, you feel good going into a game.